You found me. Yay. Yes. We made it back. <laughs> so, yeah. I was, I was looking at your stuff. I know. I was reviewing all these tests this weekend and I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to make a video anyway. So we may as well do do a podcast yeah. about heart health because you know so many people are red and they can't all immediately come in to talk to me about it and so I was like I'm gonna have to make the red video and send everybody this video I'm like feel free to make an appointment but you could also do what yeah. I'm saying right now on this video because it's not going to be terribly different for everyone of course everybody has their own special case but in general if it's red let's just check some boxes right now because I know that I we will hit on something you are not currently doing very good points. Yeah. Very good points. Yeah. So I'll tell you how I even started doing this. I do heart health. My grandmother, when she was not that much older than me, died of a heart attack. My grandfather at 60 died of a heart attack. So I've been on a heart healthy plan for a long time because everyone in my family gets hypertension. Right. Including okay. my younger siblings. I mean, everybody, we all get it. We will not escape it. So when I was younger, I knew that I was going to have to start doing stuff. So I've been doing stuff for a long time and I've always, even in my patients, you know, with menopause, I know how quickly your heart function declines once you go through menopause. So I'm always very proactive. I check their cholesterol probably more often than their regular doctor does. Cause I say, I'm like, if what we're doing is working, you're a lot of these numbers are going to get better just by accident, you know, not. And so, you know, now I'm very deliberate. So with, when she showed me the test, I did the test and you know, since I hadn't specifically really, I mean, this is just what I normally do. I was like, oh, I don't know what my risk is going to be. I don't know what my heart rate is going to be, but I, I'll check it. So she showed me someone else's thing who was like my same height, my same weight, my same age, who was, when I know this person, there's another health her person in the health field. And she was like, she's someone who does like exercises every day and she's on the whole 30 diet all the time. I mean, she's like way more hardcore than I am. I'm like, I, I eat kind of healthy and I cheat. <laughs> I mean, I mean not cheat on food, but I mean, like I take a lot of supplements to make up for what I know it lacks in my diet. And this person actually had the right diet and the right exercise. So you think, oh, we're the same age, same height, same weight. We're going to have the same score or hers was probably going to be better. You know, I mean, just talking to someone, I would think like you, I would think yours and mine would be similar. And I would think hers and mine would be similar. Well, no, mine came back and it was actually in the green zone. I was the right age, like my ages when that came back the same age. She is my age. Hers came back greater than 80. It doesn't even go over 80 because there's not enough 80 year olds in the population to compare it to. So once your heart age goes over 80, they just sort of say over 80. Over 80 right. So hers was, so hers is like 24 years older than she is. I'm like, whoa, nope, wasn't expecting that. I was like, oh, I'm going to find a lot of red because <laughs> most people aren't as good as her. Yeah. And she, you said she's about the same physical health that you are. Yeah. No, she's better than me. She's leaner. She appears to be leaner than me. I do water aerobics. She was actually doing like, you know, more weight bearing (laughs) stuff than what I do. So I was just like, I would not have expected, and you know, she doesn't smoke. She's not a drinker. You know, she's better than like, she thought, you know, I know she's doing what she's, and she's got X, you know, she's in the health field. So I know she has access to supplements. She takes supplements. She, so I was like, no, no, no. She, now the one thing I do differently than her is like, I'm much more aggressive about keeping my hormones young. And like your heart is going to tell me how your hormones are doing. If you're, if you haven't been on hormones for 20 years, like your ovaries were removed 20 years ago and you never touched another drop of hormones, your heart age is going to be much different because that's when your heart age starts to accelerate, when your hormones leave you. And if you somehow took hormones and maintained them at a youthful level, I'm going to see that in your heart. Your heart has a lot of estrogen receptors. Do not starve it. If it's starving, it will show me on this test. So the big difference between she and I is I'm much more aggressive about being normal about everything. Like I check my adrenal, I check, you know, if you weren't taking estrogen, I mean, make sure your adrenal hormones. Are you taking estrogen yourself? Some, not all the time. Usually I take everything else. It's like DHEA, I convert. See, I'm estrogen dominant. So I can literally take testosterone and DHEA. My body will make estrogen out of it because it likes to do that. So I don't always take it, but I always check my levels and make sure I'm not like, oh, look, zero. Never, it's not going to happen. Never, never okay. till I die will I have a zero estrogen. Won't do it. 
even if I cannot take estrogen, I can still take other things or I take herbs. I know which herbs will geranium will increase your estrogen level. Rose will increase your estrogen. Fennel might. So, I mean, I know how to like play and make sure that I don't go to zero. So that, and I'm very, like I said, I check that all the time and I'm very aggressive about that. And that's the one thing that's different between she and I, but I also have other patients that I've checked who I do have on hormones and they were still in the red, but I don't also know they don't diet like, you know, I better say it's all these different balls that are hanging out in the air. Like you might have the hormones, but you don't have the diet. Now, a 20 year old, we don't even do this test on 20 and 30 because they get away with everything. They, I think they start paying for the test around 40, unless you're 30 and you're diabetic or have hyper, you know, if you have a, another factor, the, the insurance pays for this test. Insurance actually pays for this test. Oh, really? This pulse test? Yes. If someone, even, even if it's an HMO, like, uh, it, like a lot of different insurances, I know PPOs are going to pay for it. And some other insurances, I don't, I can't write for an HMO just because I'm not in network, but you know, in general, right. they take a lot of, even Medicare, they take all sorts of different insurance assignments. Well, that's good to know. So most yeah. of my patients are getting it ready because then we have a new number to track or a lot of people right. think, oh, I'm, my immune system's good. My immune system's really healthy. I'm like, well, if your heart is 80, can your immune system be 20 or 30 or 40 or with more than 10 years different? No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Anybody yeah. whose heart test is 80 really needs to think about- Have you been using this test? Has it been a while? Which no, you one I started in the spring, just three or four months. I've been, so I don't have that many people because oh, okay. it just in text. I mean, she just started repping the test not that long ago. So I only knew about it yeah, when she started repping it. And then every, every two weeks we go online and do like a, like if you have, if I have patient questions, I, I can go through some of the labs with him. And I have, I had, I had a guy who really he's on, I have him on pellets. He's kind of tries to eat right. He's the normal height, normal weight, but he's 67 and his heart rate, his risk was like high. First he's like, just repeat it. He's like, let's just repeat it and make sure what, you know, what we're dealing with. Cause that doesn't even look sound right. And we repeated it. It was still high. And then he was like, how much sugar does this guy eat? And I'm like, well, he's pre-diabetic. So, and I, I was like, and he hasn't gotten worse. I mean, I've been following him for years and he's like 5.7 pre-diabetic, nothing terrible, but I'm like, but it won't, I can't get him off of it no matter what kind of supplements. And I think he's not really taking them. And he goes, no, you're going to, you have to change that. He goes, he's probably eating something. I'm like, he doesn't claim to be eating it. But then when he got the test back, he's like, well, I eat hun buns. I'm like, oh my God, nothing good ever happened after a hun bun, man. I was like, oh yeah, those are out, man. Yeah. I was like, that's what's screwing up your, you're aging yourself with a hun bun. <laughs> yeah. No, I was thinking that probably, um, uh, he's it's something that he's eating it's yeah just not the supplements necessarily it's he's eating a lot of sugar somewhere <laughs> yeah I mean, he wasn't claiming to but you know some people can eat a lot of sugar and stay skinny and so you don't really catch yeah. them and so yeah. i'm like now that you see this you know see how important it is to do that because that's gonna you know that's aging you Sugar ages people. People do not realize that it's sugar true. ages you faster. Like how many teaspoons of sugar or tablespoons are we supposed to eat a day? I, I, how many are we supposed to? Yes. <laughs> I look this up all the time and I keep forgetting and I don't know why I keep forgetting, but there's like an optimal, there's an amount of sugar we are designed to digest. Okay. Well, I see what you're saying. No, I was going to say, I try to get people to eat very little, if any, because yeah. that very little adds up very quickly. But I specifically so. tell them how many grams they can eat. So if they're tracking, I'll be like, you can eat this many. Like I have my, my fitness pal tracked to 30 grams of sugar. I get alerted if I eat more than 30 grams of free sugar. And I usually almost always stay under that. It's really, but most people, let me think, children should eat okay, so six sugar cubes. So that's six sugar cubes a day. A child should eat six sugar cubes a day. 30 grams is seven sugar cubes a day. But most people eat 17. <laughs> so when you say low, they'll they'll drop it to, you know, 10. And I'm still like, well, you're kind of double what you're supposed to, you know, the people don't really track it. So they don't really know. They don't, since they're not throwing piles of sugar, they think it's okay. Huh? So I'm just looking at the American Heart Association, and it, this looks really high to me. Um, it's saying, hang on, oops, I have a pop-up here. Mm -hmm. How much sugar is too much? It's saying that um, 
men should consume no more than nine teaspoons of right. sugar per day. Right. Uh, women is six teaspoons. Yeah. And I'm just saying, and they're saying one 12 ounce can of soda is eight teaspoons. Right. So, yeah. No, I was like, that. it's, it's a lot. That's, it is. But I mean, so, that, that but, but that's what we're supposed to do. But most of us do 17. So we're supposed to be under eight and we really eat 17. So it starts there. And most people, if they actually like track their diet for three days, they would see that they exceed this 30 grams that I oh, don't absolutely. exceed. Right. But I, like I said, I know that I don't because, but I, over years of tracking my diet, I know what it looks and feels like when I eat more than 30 grams. And so no, but most people don't track it and don't know, but I'm like, okay, if your heart test is red, you're about to start tracking it and figuring it out. Cause you've got to. Because I started paying attention to this, well, probably when I was really young, when my grandfather was diabetic and used to try to convince me to give him shots. I was like, I'm not going to stick you with the needle. But then I, I knew when I was a kid, like, I'm not going to eat a lot of sugar because I don't want to be like grandpa and have to stick myself with the needle every day. Exactly. So at a young age, I sort of knew that sugar was a special occasion thing and not my new everyday friend. So I never really ate a lot of sugar. I probably did exceed the eight sugar cubes, but not by too much. And then I got older and started tracking and making sure, because even people don't realize potatoes and rice that add, that's, that's not a sugar cube, but it still is in your 30 grams of sugar, your protein shake, your salad dressing. Yes. I mean, people don't think about it, but I'm like, uh, track it. You'll figure it out. <laughs> it adds up so fast. It adds up very fast. Mm -hmm. And that's like the number one thing you track your sugar, know how much you eat, know how much you're supposed to eat, stay there. So that's the first thing, sugar. And then which heart healthy diet do you tell people to follow? Well, you know, I think, and I've talked to you about this before. Right. I really am a huge fan of the intermittent fasting. And, um, you know, it's kind of a line between Mediterranean and, I guess, paleo keto slash, if you will, but a healthy, healthy keto, not, not yeah. the one where it's just like. Nope. And, I don't even mention keto. Cheese on everything. I don't because I know they can't have beef or pork. I mean, I, I tell them Mediterranean because I know beef and pork are out. If you're red, you have exceeded your limit of beef and pork. So yeah. your keto diet is going to be real sad and boring if I do that. So let's go to Mediterranean. So they're automatically like, hi, Mediterranean. Unless you're allergic yeah, to fish, keto, you're a Mediterranean. To, to do healthy keto because people think of keto and they think of high fat and mm -hmm. a bunch of butter and, and meat and so, um, but there is a healthy keto. There is a healthy option. Yeah, but most people aren't going to do it. I do not trust anyone to actually do it the way that is going to get them not red. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Like if, yeah. if you're red, I need the next time I see you, I need a dramatic improvement and telling you to do keto is not the way to get that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, unless they're already on keto and somehow have done well on this test, oh, whatever, you must be doing it right. But if you are anywhere near keto and I do this test, I'm like, now we know that that was not heart healthy. It's just not a heart, it's, it's not fine. one of my, no. Yeah. You could do low carb, you could do South Beach, you could do gluten-free, you could do dairy-free, you could do the Okinawa, Japan fish diet, you can do Mediterranean, but then we're done with heart, you know, you can be a vegetarian. All of those are going to, in three months, help you change this test. But anything that says keto, or, I was like, no, 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 I need to get you kind of more vegetarian and fishy. Yeah. Lean and green. Uh -huh. think, um, lean and green is the big key. I think that's what I would say. Real, you know, lean chicken, mm -hmm. you know, good heart, healthy fish, and then green. Focus on the green. Focus right. on what you can have versus what you can't have. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, and of course, you say no sugar, and if people want sugar, it makes them want it more. So. No, just 30 grams. It's, it, 30 grams is doable. You just have to be very, like, you know, your breakfast doesn't have to have sugar and you have to start calculating how much sugar you're putting on your oatmeal. And then, you know, if you're doing potatoes or rice, you might be doing cauliflower. I mean, you, you have to like, it'll, it's a process. Like I didn't, you know, I, it's a, I just learned That's which amazing. to avoid. How addicted people are to sugar and I don't mm -hmm. realize it. And even if they're not addicted, it's just so easy to get your hands on potatoes and rice. It's on everything. They right. bring you a whole plate of it when you eat out and then you eat it. Right. And French fries, they, they just there aren't even, if they want quick carbs, but the quick stuff is always carbs and carbs always have sugar. Yep. And they don't realize, you know, then of course, if you're doing keto, yeah, I've got you off the sugar, but I also nine times out of 10 have you on a lot of meat and that is not heart healthy. You can't have beef and pork and think you're going to change red into yellow. Right. Can't do it. 
you can be a vegetarian you can eat some tofu yeah. but okay so how do you get people to eat more fruits and vegetables because that's another because really the biggest thing about a vegetarian diet diet is not so much that you ate that you're a vegetarian it's that, that they're more likely to get to their five to ten servings of fruits and vegetables a day and someone who's doing keto is not that's another reason i don't recommend keto because you are not eating five you you can't be in ketosis if you're eating five to ten servings of fruits and vegetables a day fruits. yeah I so the fruit you know i always tell people to focus on the vegetables yeah that's you know the vegetables because you could eat a huge bowl of salad or you know a whole like a, a pound of broccoli right and right it's not going to affect you in the same way that the fruit will. And then right. go over, you know, which fruit are okay to use and, and uh, to eat in small quantities, you know, stick to the berries. And really, it, I think people assume that just because it's fruit, it's healthy. Right. And I think a lot of fruit is absolutely, you know, it's got a lot of great nutrients, but there's a lot of sugar. And people who have, are addicted to sugar, you kind of just have to cut them cold turkey, no sugar, and get their body readjusted to having no sugar so they're not having those constant cravings and, and addictions really right so right and then when they do have it on occasion it's not that big a deal um but i think that's the biggest thing is to get them off the sugar and i and the fruit falls into that category so right you know you're trying you know say 30 30 grams it's just it'd be it's what i would say more than anything is just cut it out completely just no None. Yeah. And no, you mean you fruit? Know. No, no, no. I, I yeah. definitely let them eat fruit. I mean, I have them track it. If they if they're staying under their 30 grams of carbs, fine. And usually I, I tell them I steer them towards blueberries and raspberries and strawberries. So they can have all the yes. like, berries is usually not gonna kill it. I'm like, if they're running around eating four bananas a day, all right, we have a problem. Or four apples, and I'll just say you can have one orange, one apple, and a bunch of berries. <laughs> and I was like, and those, and that's your list of fruit. You might even be able to have a kiwi once in a while, but I was like, but I give them a list of fruits that is actually low glycemic because I do want them to eat fruit. I personally don't eat, I mean, I eat a decent amount of fruit, mostly blueberries. If you see me with fruit, it's usually berries, but I cheat with the Ningxia Red. I mean, I, I'm always, I'm usually doing a super fruit drink, or if I do any juice, I'll do like two ounces of pomegranate juice because I know how heart healthy it is, or I'm using like green powder. So I actually supplement with a lot of green capsules, green powders, and super fruits because I want my seven servings, but I don't want to have right. to eat a ton of sugar to get my seven servings. So if I can do five grams of sugar and that's how my fruit goes, then I, that's okay. I'll, I'll give up five to 10 grams of sugar, but some, and most people aren't going to eat, you know, seven apples a day. I mean, but I, but sometimes you have to specify that <laughs> don't become a yeah. fruititarian because <laughs> you're about to yeah. eat too much sugar, but I was like, well, but you I can have fruit. Yeah. I've seen though, if mm -hmm. I could get people to, you know, and that's not forever right? Um, to get away from that sugar addiction. And that's the, the hardest thing. And if they're right. still getting that sugar, even a little bit in the fruit, it's, it's kind of continuing that, that, yeah. that cycle that they tend to be on. Yeah. So, but I think it might satisfy yeah. their craving. They want something sweet. And I'm like, at least you're eating something heart healthy. Don't eat something mm -hmm. sweet. That's like a candy True. bar. And I was like, at least, or even, but if you wanted dark chocolate, that's actually heart healthy. If you're going to eat, but I have to tell them you can have two squares. <laughs> I mean, not like, Oh, a bar. No, no, no. I was like, you can have this much dark chocolate. One little, you can have a Hershey's kiss. That's it. Or, you know, but fruit, I would say blueberries. And a lot of people do smoothies. I'm like, okay, blueberries. Oh, I'll put a banana. No, you won't. <laughs> You'll put a blueberry in it. So, cause I like the colors. I like purple and, you know, I like the red and the purples. And so, so I, yeah, no, I'm generous with berries, even when they're like watching their grams of sugar, because I'm like, they do need to satisfy that craving. If you tell them not to do something, they're really going to want to do it. You have to give them like a square of chocolate and some blueberries just so they'll be like, all right, I have something I I've, I've done it. I'm, I'm, I it's off my mind. Cause they'll, otherwise they'll just fall apart and not do it. Don't focus on what they Yes. They always do that. And so I always tell them limit. If you track your 30 grams, you'll find out how you can get your sneak your sugar in with your 30 grams. Yeah. Cause I, I don't feel deprived. I mean, like I said, I literally live on that edge of under 30 grams. I can't stand for my little, my fitness pal to turn red. Cause I've gone over. So just, and actually a lot of people are getting that out of drinking that, that it affects how much drinking they can do. Yes. I'm like, margaritas are out. You're going to do your whole 30 grams of margarita. You have a Coke. I mean, so sometimes they're doing one thing that's doing the whole shebang. And if you, yeah. 
Yeah. Sometimes if you take away the one thing they're really like doing that's bad. Oh, a donut. Nope. Yeah. You just killed your whole 30 grams. You're starved for the rest of the day. So sometimes if you get make them aware of their Sabbath, how they're sabotaging themselves. And then the, you can say, make a habit of eating the blueberries, make a habit of having your square of chocolate, because then you'll have your sugar craving satisfied and you won't go off the deep end with something I really don't want you to do. Right, right. So I usually- okay, So this um, is saying the 12, a four ounce margarita. Okay, that's four ounces. Mm -hmm. How many margaritas have you seen that are four ounces? No, zero. <laughs> Not, nothing that you're gonna buy. Sugar. Right. So yeah, when you, that's just a, I'm just pulling that up. No. And, and usually they give you those big giant fishbowl ones nowadays. Like, yeah. do you want the small, which is eight ounce or do you want the 16 ounce? And you know, that's like a hundred grams of sugar and you're supposed to have 30. Yeah. That's going to kill you. So uh, wine is heart healthy. It does not have a lot of sugar it has maybe two to three grams of yes. sugar in it. I already know that yeah. vodka, gin, no grams of sugar, but then you put a mixer in it. Well, if you had like one ounce of orange juice or whatever, you're still not over your sugar. So you have to really like start researching and calculating and giving yourself a list. Like I know I can have grapefruit and vodka, orange juice and vodka, light on the grapefruit and orange juice. Mm -hmm. Beer is high carb. So don't do that. You can have one glass of wine. Okay. You know, so I, I actually give people a list. Here's what you can drink. Here's what you can mix and make it work. Even if, if you go out and all your friends are having a margarita, maybe you have to have a skinny check and see how many grams of carbs is going to be in that. Or just say, bring me tequila and soda and add your own stevia to it. I mean, make it, you know, you gotta make it work. If you have to drink something, make it, don't let it be sabotaging you. I'll just do it on the weekends, one day a week. I'm like, that will raise your insulin for like four days and you are still not doing it. Yeah. Very true, very true. Yeah, so That's drinking, true. I always have to address alcohols. Like I'm not ever gonna tell people to never drink alcohol again, but you, women can have one serving a day, men can have two servings a day. And here's what is, here's your list of what's allowed. If you yeah. want to stay in the heart healthy lane and here's what's going to sabotage you. So yeah. Yeah, alcohol is going to sabotage, especially with, with weight, I think. Right. But I think if somebody were drinking one glass of wine a day, especially wine, it does not sabotage your weight. It just doesn't. If you're not going over 30 grams of carbs, one glass of wine a day. Now, most people are drinking three or they're, yeah, or they're doing a margarita. But if somebody were like, I just like to have a glass of wine before I go to bed or with my dinner, yeah. when I go out at random, that that's usually not putting, a, that's... I, I can find other things that are putting weight on them. I can find some gluten. I can find some milk. I can find your rice and your potatoes. I can find so many things in their diet that day that are worse than the one glass of red wine. Yeah. And I usually, like, and, I'll, and I do that all the time. I'll, I'll, they'll be like, my diet's good. I'm like, let's sit here. Give me what you did yesterday and we'll put the whole thing in chronometer and I can say, see every vitamin they ate, every calorie. Uh, did you eat it? It's like you ate all these carbs. There was no protein. And then here's your too many grams of sugar. I was like, that's the diet. And then once they have those numbers, they're like, oh, okay. I was like, now we're going to change well, something. It's um, it's always interesting too when they start writing things down, like what yeah. they're actually eating every day. Yeah, because we had a whole talk about this. We we got to point people to our other talk about how you are a writer and I am a put it in the yep. computer and make the computer calculate it for you because I like numbers so I can say thirty grams. That's how I can pick out my thirty grams of carbs in about five minutes. Whereas on paper, I don't necessarily see that. I mean, you could, but I'm like, nope, let's go to the computer. It will calculate for us. And here we are with a number that we now have a goal. Yeah. That is true. You definitely get a better calculation right. with these apps. I right. definitely agree with that. I, I just, it's really making people really accountable when they're writing it down. I know. There's so many things they don't want to write down. I know. <laughs> so and no, or... And then with the app, you can like do it in real time. I was like, every time you eat that minute, don't forget like, oh, you're going to forget the one little piece of chocolate and this and that. I was like, I, when you're doing it. and, and my fitness pal lets you take a picture of what you ate and puts it in for you. So I'm like, really? yes, you have to pay the upgraded thing. I haven't done that yet. And I really need to do that because like I said, I, I'm that, That's very cool. I'm that, you know, detailed about diet stuff, but yeah. It's very helpful when I pull, I actually little, will put it in, I'll print it and I'll start circling. Like, here's where you're, you know, where you want to look at more, you more protein, less carbs. Here's where all your sugar is. 
fix it. Even a really healthy smoothie. I'm like, all right, you did your entire 30 grams of sugar right here in your smoothie. And you might not want to do that. Those things, I think, you know, people go through, what is it, smoothie kings? And- oh, that's never, never, no. Oh, that's the worst thing oh. you could. That is worse than alcohol. Like, I never tell people to stop drinking alcohol, but I will take them off smoothie king in a heartbeat. I'm like, at home, when you can manage what you're doing, like, look at your shake and make sure it's got less than 10 grams of carbs or this many grams of yep. sugar. And then add a, this many blueberries, 10. And then add some, you know, I, I, I literally calculate every single thing. And I'm like, okay, here, now you have used 10 grams of your carbs because that really if you're going to only do 30 grams of sugar a day you can only have 10 grams each meal right and that you know and that your little smoothie king shake can eat up most of them or you have one glass of soda you killed the whole thing one margarita you killed the whole thing so you really like sugar is a big thing and you have to get on your little iphone and or whatever kind of smartphone you have and Calculate, you know, find one of those free apps and figure out your macros real quick. Right. Mm-hmm. You'll figure it out. It'll it, it, the learning curve is different. Like in a week or two, you're going to figure out where all your weak spots are, and you can fix it pretty quickly. Because this test can be run every ninety days, and so you want to be able. To, you know, diet is the first thing you've got to work on. Now, what supplements do you have? Like, what are your favorite heart healthy supplements? Well, so obviously omegas. That's all. I know that's like my number one, and and it's surprising how many people are like, really fish oil. I'm like, oh my god, why have you not read that yet? (laughs) I I know, and there's so many benefits to it, not just for the heart. Oh, everything. So now, here's someone. What do you do for people that have that can have fish? Oh flax oil is probably my next okay. thing I'm going to do. Cause it's pretty heart healthy. Also, I'll have them do mm-hmm. flax milk. I'll give them a list of like chia seeds, walnuts. There's a lot of things that have omega-3 in them that are not fish, or there's a lot of supplements that use algae instead of fish. So it depends on how bad their fish allergy is. Yes. So that's, yeah, that's something that I've run into a couple of times and, um, you know, getting them to get the yeah to get the cholesterol down not eating fish getting enough protein it's like what do they have chicken (laughs) yeah oh yeah that's true that's true that's true so yeah (laughs) but yeah i like fish but uh, um, and a lot of times, I'll, like I said, I'll even just put a make in their diet. I'm like, okay, if you're eating oatmeal for breakfast, stick some walnuts in it. There you just got omega-3 or add flax seeds to it. Or if you're eating yogurt for a snack at some point, add walnuts or flax seeds to it and right. put, you know, so there's just a lot of different, even, oh, goji berries. Goji berries have omega-3 in them. It's a fruit with omega-3. Yeah. Yes. So I'll be like, put goji, if you make overnight oats, add goji berries to that. Interesting. Right. So, I mean, I I just, so I'll just give them a list of things they should go buy that have a lot of omega-3 in it. And I'll say, if you can't have fish oil, here's your flax milk, your hemp milk, your hemp seeds, your, you know, and add it to all your salads and foods and you'll actually get a decent amount, probably more than people eating fish oil who like to forget it. I don't take fish oil every day. I mean- I do, but I also know how to make, it's, it's fat soluble, so your body will store it. So I know if I didn't have my two yesterday, I can eat four today and make up for the two I didn't have yesterday. Right. But I also have a very, and I, I used to check my omega level all the time. And just if I eat my omega level, eight is like the goal. And I would get to like 6.8 just eating. And I would get to 7.8 if I was supplementing. So I really needed to take more than two, but I still got pretty close to eight. So, okay, what else? So, um, oh, my next favorite is CoQ10. Yes. Oh my and God, that number two. Huge. huge. Especially people that are on statins already. Oh yeah. That's, they're more important. CoQ10. But and- most of our patients are not on statins. They specifically come to us to not be on a statin. <laughs> as well but you have them on reggie strice is like reggie strice your big thing like if do you have all of your patients on reggie strice if they're not on, i mean i have people who come to me from other doctors on a statin but they are not coming to me to get yeah. the statin so you know i and i usually suggest reggie strice bergamo has some kind of statin like activity so there's a few supplements that are going to give you a statin effect without being a statin but everyone's on coq10 whether they're on a statin or not 
it's that especially those people that are on statins there. So, yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Coke, and I prefer ubiquinol. I ubiquinol. Just, it seems like some of the studies I've read, it's just a better form. That is true. I've read that. However, I draw a lot of CoQ10 levels on people. Okay. And I mean, it could be that if they're on ubiquinol, they can just take 100 and maybe they'll get good levels. But I usually have people on 200, 300. I'm pretty generous with it. And they're going to get to the levels I want, no matter which form they take. So I just tell them, go find some, eat it. We'll draw your levels and then we'll go from there. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to get you to the number I want you at, no matter which you buy. And all of them I've seen have will elevate their levels to at least normal, maybe not optimal where I want it, but at least, you know, they'll be working with something. Because if they're on nothing and I draw their blood, I'm like, oh no, this is not good. And CoQ10 comes out of meat, mostly like beef and liver, which I'm not going to encourage them to eat beef and nobody really eats liver. So CoQ10 is not something that is easily acquired from the diet. There's not a lot of foods I can tell you to eat that have CoQ10. So people have to take it because it's very heart friendly. It's like congestive heart failure, you know, it's good for helping the heart muscle. So yeah, you need CoQ10 and a lot of it. Right. And if people are on statins, it depletes them. Oh, big time. Or a CoQ10. Oh, so for that's sure. Even more reason to take it if they're already on something like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, so nicotinic acid, niacin. Yes, um, yes, yes. So true niagen is the form that I think Dr. Harrington likes. Ni you know, okay. people flush with niacin. Well, so now the, some of the research, and I haven't done anything real recently, it, it, it seems that the flushing nice nicotinic acid mm -hmm. is what is shown to be uh the that actually helps with lipid levels yeah so, that's the one that works with that helps you lower your triglycerides it's specifically studied for triglycerides for people with very high triglycerides like we used to prescribe it if your triglycerides were over 500 but true niagen somehow when he's looking at the heart attack risk that somehow that particular form i guess absorbs better and he liked that but it's very expensive so if somebody said hey can i just go to the store and buy regular niacin a lot of people can convert that to probably something that's usable and that's fine if they don't flush or, you know, are comfortable with whatever the flushing is and it's more affordable and they want to do that. I don't oppose people doing that. But if I have somebody who can afford to do the true niagen, that's like one capsule, you're not going to flush. Compliance is better. And somehow when they're looking at these tests again, they're seeing, having good results. Right. And I really have to pin him down on the difference, like what he thinks, like why he prefers that. I mean, he's told me, he said that I've heard him say publicly that he prefers it, but I haven't really drilled down why he likes it better than regular niacin at this point. Probably because compliance. I'm guessing that the reason they're seeing better numbers, sometimes you see better numbers, not because the drug is better, but because the patients actually take it and then you see a better number because they eat it. Whereas if I say, oh, take this ni you know, niacin and then you're flushing and they don't take it and then you have documented that they're on niacin, but they're down, they decrease their dose. You know, there's some, there's always something weird when you give somebody something, you know, is going to have a side effect. <laughs> well, and I know with that, what we typically do is we have to work up to it. So start with a little slow, yeah. a lower dose and then work up to it over time. Yeah. Um, no, but there's yeah. like a 50% flush rate on that. So it's not something I, I would say that the majority of my patients are not on that. I, I have them on the true niagen or some equivalent form of that type of supplement just because they're more likely to come back taking it if they can afford like i said it's very expensive so if i have somebody who can actually swing that then they're going to be still taking it but the niacin people are notorious for coming back and telling me that they're not taking it it just is what it is i mean i was doing niacin for a decade i've been mean, you know recommending it for a decade but not even 10 percent of the people come back still on it whereas the you know the true niagen, I'll have a little better continuation rate because it's just, it's not obnoxious. You only have to take one pill and then, you know, it's not very obnoxious. It's not mean to you. It's like even like fish oil, like there's particular brands that I recommend because people don't come back saying they burp. If I just tell people, hey, go to the store, pick one up, 
chances are they're going to fishy burp and they're not going to get up to four pills a day or two pills or any because they don't like the burping. Then they'll go to krill oil, which you have to take like eight of them to equal one regular capsule. So I'm like, you know, they're like, I read krill oil was good. I'm like, but when I draw your blood, we're not going to see what I want to see. Now, what do you think? Like, what do you think krill oil, like what is your experience with krill oil success versus regular fish oils? Well, I haven't really used krill oil. I've had a couple of patients that wanted to take it because right. of things that they've read. But right. I just recommend, and plus it's more expensive. Yeah. So people tend to be okay with the fish oil as long as they can eat fish, right? Right. Um, you, you know, they. I haven't really pushed the krill oil as much. Yeah, I never push it. I just always have people self-referring for it they'll come in and like i found this at the store is this just as good it's like fish oil and it's smaller and it doesn't burp and i'm like did you take eight of them and they're like no i took one i'm like you can't take one tiny pill and it's not going to substitute that other giant pill it's like one third of that pill i was like it just it is we are going to draw your blood and it's just not going to be impressed even though it's got benefits that i'm pro i can't track and i can't see and yeah there people are compliant with it but and if they want to take that in addition to their fish oil then Fine. Or if they were really good at their diet, like if they ate tuna every day and then wanted to take krill oil, that would be fine. But if they don't have a lot of omega in their diet and they just think that one krill is going to make up for the whole, I don't eat salmon thing. I'm like, yeah, it won't do that. I have not seen it do that. For the heart health, right? Correct. Okay. Well, for, yeah. Cause I mean, mostly time, most of the time I'm really tracking, did your cholesterol get better? When people come to me and I put them on any sort of a program, I want their cholesterol to trend to normal and their CRP and their hemoglobin A1C. Like those three things are like your little heart trifecta. And like I said, I'm also checking omega-3 levels and CoQ10 levels. I'm checking a lot of stuff and I can see if you're on enough CoQ10 and if you're on enough omega because I've got your blood. And then I see how your cholesterol is doing with it. Usually if people will hit the CoQ10 and omega-3 goal, their cholesterol will respond to that. It's very, you know, so, and if they're on krill oil, that omega-3 level does not budge if they're not taking a lot. A lot. A right. lot. Like usually like four to eight, not like one. And I'm like, nope, we're, it's nothing. It's dropping the bucket. And, and cutting out the sugar. That's going to be. Well, that's big. Too. Well, because that's definitely going to reflect in the hemoglobin A1C. Well, and I see, because I see a lot of people that just want to try to take the pills instead yeah. of changing their lifestyle and their habits, their eating habits. So, um, it, it can be done, but it's going to be more expensive because that's a lot more pills. Because I have people who I just know, or even they'll even tell me like, I'm not going to change my diet. And I'm like, do you know how much chromium I'm about to give you to drop your blood sugar because I can do it. <laughs> I can give you some metformin and some chromium and some berberine that now you've just spent $50 a month to do that. I can, I can cheat you out of some sugar spikes now. Don't, don't think I can't, but that's an expensive way to go rather than just making better choices. I'm like, it gets you out of a lot of pills. If you can actually alter this your diet big time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm the queen of cheating because you see that I, you know, I'm variable about my cheat, my food. So I, I take a lot of pills. What do you think about olive oil? What do you tell people about olive oil? I like olive oil. I think it's, I mean, in moderation, obviously, uh, don't, I don't like to have it heated up too much because it's not good. It's not a good cooking oil for yeah. high temperatures. Do you ever have it's people fantastic. just okay. take like a tablespoon or two or three daily, just eat a s olive oil? Do you ever have them no, do that? I don't. No, I don't. You know, I'd recommend using that like a salad dressing. Right. I tell them okay. to do that. Now, do you have them take a supplement? You know, Young Living has all of essentials, which one capsule is like a liter of olive oil. Oh, is it now? I was thinking it was olive oil extract. Well, no, it says, it says it's hydroxy. To, it, even in there, they actually put that online. You know how they like to write yeah. stuff that's not clinically meaningful, but they actually do say that the hydroxy, like the, we have the amount of hydroxyterosal we have in this supplement is equivalent to what you would find in a liter of olive oil. And hydroxyterosal is what they do a lot of studies on when it comes to olive oil and heart health, which is why the Mediterranean diet is like so hot because there's olives and olive oil and everything and eating the amount that they eat is meaningful. If somebody's like, oh yeah, I cook with it and heat it. I'm like, well, you know, that's not going to get you out of the red zone. But if you were taking like a capsule that said, that specifically says we have a leader in this one capsule, then you might right. be onto something. Now that's actually, that might be something I'll start. I didn't, I didn't pay it to, I've never 
olive essentials. Um, yeah. No, I have some. I have a bottle sitting right next to me. It was an olive leaf extract. It is, it might be, but they still guarantee, you know, for, and they're putting parsley. Parsley is very heart healthy. If you ever look up parsley and heart, it's, it's in all, and rosemary, they're both in olive essentials and it's got olive fruit extract, olive leaf extract, parsley and rosemary. But on the front, it'll say supports total body wellness with hydroxy, hydroxyterosol yeah. from Spanish olives. So they specifically know that they have a liter's worth of hydroxyterosol. And a lot of things that are olive leaf extract do not claim that or say that. And you definitely want that, you know, you want to have that benchmark. You want to have that measure there if you're going to try to get someone out of the red zone. So yeah, the all, and then you know that Young Living has turmeric now. They just, they just launched it last month and it has Boswellia. So Dr. Harrington really likes for people to take Boswellia capsules, not frankincense. Well, frankincense is Boswellia, but not the liquid frankincense. He likes Boswellic powder. Okay. Like, you know, Boswellia for pain. People take a lot of Boswellia capsules right. for whatever. Yeah. So they mix their turmeric, which is supposed to be like one spoonful of their turmeric supposed to be like taking six capsules plus they add the boswell resin in it then it's got some essential oils you know how they are <laughs> and ginger it's got ginger so ginger turmeric boswellia okay, which, which product are you talking it's about it's called which, golden golden tur is. golden turmeric they also have a, a spiced turmeric tea oh. but look okay. at the golden turmeric but yeah one of their theirs so, are supposed to absorb it's new. Know. It's new. How was it? It was good. A lot of people like it, especially if you add milk and make a whole golden milk thing out of it. People, everybody enjoyed it. It's not bad. And it's got mango and rose. So it's actually a good flavor. It's like mango, rose, and all those other things. So I think that's going to be really good for inflammation. I think that's going to be another one of, between the olive essentials and the golden turmeric, I think that's going to do like a lot for people. That is very good. And, yeah, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to that. And then you've got the Ningxia red and the multigreen. So you've got your fruits and vegetables. Then you've got the olive essentials. Then you've got the the turmeric. That would actually really do some stuff. Oh, you have you ever used the cardio gyes from Young Living? Cardio gyes. Where's my cardio? Yes, I have. It smells really good too. <laughs> and it's got the cardio gyes has. Garlic. So garlic is another thing that Dr. Harrington really likes. It's got garlic and CoQ10 are the first two ingredients in the cardio gyes. But the cardio gyes, yes. it doesn't list exactly how much though. You know, it's a proprietary blend. So I don't know how much garlic and I don't know how much CoQ10, but I know they're both in cardio gyes. Now I take quite a bit of um, garlic. garlic on its own. Mm -hmm. which, which brand do you take? You know, I've been using, I go between, Anabolic Labs has got one that I was using, and then um, Meta, Metagenics has one that I've used. Yeah. Now, There's a couple. Doctor, and, and, you know, as long as I'm not. Dr. Harrington likes the one, like the Kyolic Aged Garlic Extract by Wakunga. What is their name? Wakunga? There's some company. Yeah, and that's one you can just get at the, the, at the store. Yeah, but that, somehow that's the one he's recommending. But I, I happen to have okay. both of those. I have one that's got one of their products has CoQ10 and one of them has ACE and selenium and milk thistle and green tea. It's got a lot of stuff. <laughs> and it's, got, it's got everything. Yeah. And I, it just happened to be on sale one day, so I bought it. But <laughs> so. And then I've got the Cardio Gize, which has garlic. But yeah, garlic is another. And I, I tell people that for blood thinning, um, as we get older, our blood gets more viscous. And so I like garlic for blood thinning. I like vitamin E for blood thinning. I like ginkgo biloba, all, all of which are heart healthy. So yeah, if somebody- I don't use a lot of ginkgo. I used to use a ginkgo tea a lot, but- Or it's good for memory. I use it a lot for memory, but it's also good for hot flashes. Whenever you have something that vasodilates or helps you with your blood vessels, mm -hmm. you're- hot flat you know you don't get so spasmy and flashy yeah so how do you boost people's estrogen do you ever have specific things that you use for estrogen that kind of stuff 
You know, I have with some patients, I don't, I don't really do as much with the hormones as you do. So that's probably more, um, your place, but I know there's a couple of products with people that have been low in progesterone that I've used that are more natural. Right. Um, but I don't really, I haven't really done a lot with increasing estrogen. I feel like more people tend to be estrogen toxic than they are. not. If you have the right form of estrogen in your body, then estrogen toxic is like we're plastics and xenoestrogens and we're eating crap. So a lot of them are hitting your receptor. You have to have an equal amount of good estrogen to even compete with them. You don't want nothing but bad estrogen all over your receptors. You have to have good estrogen. Even if you're estrogen dominant, you want to make sure the good estrogen is on your receptors or the bad estrogen is going to go attach and do mysterious things that I do not know about. I know what estradiol will do to you. I do not know what the cow hormone that attaches to the same receptor is going to do. Right. So I like to be in control of what, what estrogen is in your body and make sure you. So what, so what do you typically recommend for natural? So for natural estrogen? geranium. They actually did a study where they gave people, I think, 10 different essential oils to see which ones would provoke salivary estradiol levels. So they actually measured their estrogen. Okay. Now, salivary estradiol is a very small amount. It's not like it's like, oh, look, I'm 20. No, but at least it will change the levels and geranium and rose were the two essential oils that would generate levels. Like it provoked salivary estrogen levels. It made them go. Geranium, rose. geranium yeah, and rose. Do you have them have, take these internally or do you have them have, take these? Um, I mean, it's just- a, I think in, in that study, they yeah, were, they were diffusing it. In the study, they diffused it. Yes. But Young Living, I think some of their supplements have geranium in it already. And some of their blends like Endogize and Juvaflex. Like in my book, I have a whole list of things that have geranium in them that are blended that you can eat. Like, And then you could actually put them in a capsule if you wanted to. So you can get geranium orally, but you don't have to. I mean, you could take Juvaflex and put it in your tea, which I do. And then you're eating geranium or you can diffuse it, which it smells like rose. It's flowery. I like it. So, or you can put it on your skin. Geranium is very good for your skin. So you can take a few drops and rub it on your stomach, shoulders, wherever you want every day. So it doesn't matter how you get it because when the molecules are so small, they're going to roam around and look for estrogen receptors or whatever receptors they like to look right. for. So yeah, I like geranium. It's my favorite. And I tell every single person to get a bottle and have fun. Or something, a blend with it. Geranium. Lady Sclerol has geranium. Trauma Life has geranium. There's mm -hmm. all, like, they have like at least 30 blends that contain geranium. At least five of which are edible. So yeah, I have them do geranium. What other herbs will do it? Most people don't eat soy, but soy would, yeah, soy is variable. Sometimes I see it yes. provoke estrogen. Sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, there are several things that can boost your, or even DHEA can boost your estrogen level if you take enough, if you have leftovers. So I really optimize the yeah. other hormones. See, DHEA and pregnenolone are very easy to get over the counter. So that's like a very easy way for people to give their body access to at least a little estrogen by taking the precursors. I do that. So between that and geranium, a person can actually put themselves in a different situation than if they just had nothing. Nothing, right. Right. So yeah. That's interesting. So I didn't realize, I know diffusing, it definitely can have an effect, but that's pretty fascinating. Yeah, in the study. With that, in, the study. in almost every study with this, I mean, unless they're doing it in rats and injecting them or something, if they're doing essential oil studies in humans, they are typically either massaging a few drops or inhaling it. Mm -hmm. And they're not, you know, okay. I, I know a lot of people say, oh, put it on your VitaFlex points, which is fine, or put it here or there. But in most of the studies that I refer to in my book, they were either just massaging it topically or diffusing it or just sniffing it out of the right. bottle. I mean, they, they weren't doing anything terribly fancy. They weren't eating it. I mean, I will have some people eat certain edible forms if they want to, or like I said, if they're drinking tea every day, I'll say, add this oil or add that oil if I know that it's going to have some sort of benefit. And there are a lot of heart healthy essential oils 
cinnamon will lower your, you know, it's, I like cinnamon and Okotea yeah. for the blood sugar effects. And a lot of times, like I said, if somebody is consistently going over 30 grams, even if they're not, I might still want them to have cinnamon and Okotea because that'll buy them a few extra, you know, it'll kind of blunt that effect if they're not going too far over. So I just give them a list of heart. If, if I have people who are already using oils, I'll tell them these are the oils you want to include because it will get you out of a few pills. Yeah, I think that sometimes people get a little overwhelmed with uh, the sheer number of possible potential supplements that they could be taking. Right. Um, yeah. So. And, and I take like, how many pills do you take a day? Cause I'll, I take easily 20, but I didn't start taking 20 pills yesterday. I started 15 years ago taking, oh, I need to take, I need to take enzymes. Wait, I need to take probiotics or I need to put that in my diet. If I'm not going to eat it, then I need to do this. And then I need to do that. So over the past 15 years, if you add on one pill a year, yeah, I can get up to 15, 20 pills a day, but someone who's on one pill, oh, yeah. it's hard to get them on 20. So I have to change their diet. That's easier. Well, not really. I was like, oils get them out of a lot of no, pills. Is, yeah. And I tend to, you know, kind of pick and, you know, I don't take the exact same thing every single day either. Me neither. Uh, there's some things I do, but you know, there are some days um, I might change something or add something or like, you know what, just like you said, I didn't eat enough of, you know, a certain nutrient or um, feeling a little bit run down or, you know, whatever it might look like, you know, eat a little, few too many carbs, add extra bees, you know, just, it's funny how I change things up almost every day. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, magnesium's my constant. Um, yes. Oil, of yes. course, I like to take with food. So, so what do you think about magnesium and heart health? Do you ever, as a part of a heart healthy diet, have people take magnesium? Well, I think magnesium is probably one of the number one things that I, across the board, not just for heart health. Right. It's so important to so many reactions and so many people are depleted of magnesium. The challenge is, again, with magnesium, it's such a large mineral. You have to take two or three capsules to get what you need every day. So, yeah, you know, kind of running into that is, again, is that whole idea of people don't want to take a lot of pills a lot of times. Right. Um, but no, magnesium is hugely important. Oh, yeah. Because so, your heart is a muscle and it has an electrical charge and magnesium is yeah. a mineral that helps it with that. And it helps with blood pressure and it helps with blood sugar and it helps with adrenal support. So, you know, and especially if somebody tells me they're constipated or have a headache, I'm like, oh, you're about to take a lot of magnesium. And if they don't want to take pills, yes. I'm like, do you bathe every day? Can you put Epsom salt? Can you put, soak your feet in Epsom salts for 20 minutes? Can you get a topical magnesium right. spray and use that every day? Can I mean, there's a people don't realize that magnesium can be transdermal. And so if you don't want to take a pill every day, you have to be good at something else. You can. Mm -hmm. True, true. Right. Whereas I'm, Very I'm true. decent at the pill. It, it helps you sleep. So if somebody can't sleep, we'll take, uh, you know, take a boatload of magnesium at light, night. You'll sleep. Yep. That's true. Can you overdose? Very yes, true. you can overdose. Yes. You'll poop, but that's okay. Just poop, let, you know, do less the next day and you'll stop. Don't worry about it. Exactly. The I overdose know. is poop. <laughs> It needed to come out anyway. It's so, yeah, I was say I'm not it's sad. It, it's controllable. Yeah, if, if you keep pooping, that means it was there. It needed to come out, so we're good. It's good for your bones. I have people on it just for bone health. Fiber is big, yeah. which is why I'm big on oat, oatmeal. Do you have people take oatmeal or some sort of grainy breakfast? Like, I don't know what kind of thing would I have to eat for breakfast? Oats is like the easiest thing. Overnight oats. Throw some, like I said, throw some chia seeds and some go goji berries and some oatmeal and leave it overnight and eat it in the morning. Oh, you are so heart healthy. You've just done everything. So yes, yeah, so that's another biggie. Um, if they're not eating fiber, it's like, how do we get it into their diet? So there's yeah. supplements for that as well. Right. Now, what's your favorite, fi right. what's your favorite fiber? My favorite kind of is then a fiber just because it's clear and people will do it without really tripping about it. <laughs> you know, like if I tell them to take, yeah. I like Metamucil, but you know, it's a lot of, you got to take a few pills in order. And that's, I've taken up their pill space and I'm not going to get them to take other pills. Whereas Benefiber fiber is clear. You can mix it and stuff. And there you are. Right. Well, standard process has a fiber that I tend to use. Um, is it green? Is that, it tasteless? Like no. So they've got one that you mix. So they've also got capsules as well. So it just depends on the person. Because a lot of times I'll have them add the, the whole food fiber, which is, it's all whole food based, which is what I like about their products. Right. And I will have them add that to their shake. 
but they also have a gastrofiber, which is the capsules, which they can take as well. So just depends. You know, some people would rather take the capsules than have to try to eat. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, some people want the capsules, but we've already mentioned the fish oil's got to come in capsules and the garlic exactly. is usually going to be a capsule. Then if I have you do some extra greens in a capsule. And so sometimes the fiber is the one thing I'm like, you can put that in your smoothie. You can put that in yes. water and it's clear. Yes. And you can, I was like, I usually try to like anything that doesn't have to be in a capsule, even the magnesium, if they're constipated, I want them to take it orally because then they'll go. And if they're not, you know, but otherwise I'm like, maybe that'll be the gel and you'll do that topically because anytime I can take a capsule away from you, that means I can do something else. Cause I really, I don't realistically expect people to take, I can take 20 a day, but I don't expect most people to take more than 10 things a day. So sometimes we got to pick and choose which 10 capsules a day we're going to do. That's a good point. So that's why I'm like, fiber is the last thing I'm going to do in capsules. I'm going to make them eat some beans. <laughs> I'm going to have them eat some oatmeal. And then here's your bit of fiber in your water. And now you're there rather than seven capsules. Right. Even though it's an option. Like I said, I might have somebody who can do 30 pills a day and they'll do some fiber pills. But in general, I'm like, I'll give them a list. Like even CoQ10 can come in liquid. And I might say, yeah, we're going to have to start putting that in something else. Fish oil can come in a liquid, doesn't have to be a capsule. So I have those people who don't want to take any yeah, capsules. They actually, they've got some really tasty fish oils, liquids now. There's one I tried, I was trying to remember, it was almost like a like an orange cream taste. It was really good. I was pretty impressed with it. Um, so yeah, no, that's that's a really good point. A couple of people, they can't swallow pills at all, which is, you know, tends to be challenging for them too to get all the nutrients that they need so right or they can take because tiny pills yeah like take what i'm sorry i said some people can take small pills which is why they're on the krill but not big pills and so we all have our yep yep so i know in some of these like these multivitamins in liquid form they taste horrible yeah so that's another interesting challenge that I found a couple like now foods has a, their liquid multivitamin does not taste bad. And I can get most people to eat that one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. There's like one or two that I've had, that I've had people do and that I've done myself that are like, that they actually like, but really most of them. Yes. I would say 99% of them are disgusting. Or even Barleen's has that liquid fish oil. That's yummy. I'll sit there and eat packets of that. Oh, really? I haven't tried that one. No, because they sell them at like, I've seen them at H-E-B and Whole Foods. It's Barleen's and they have like pina colada flavored flax fish swirl and, oh, wow. and you know, berry flavored oh, this. And stuff. yeah, they cater to kids a lot. So, I mean, like they're, that particular brand, their stuff is like yummy. Like you'll eat it just to be eating it. That's funny though, you know, to say it tastes like a pina colada. It does. I mean, it has that pineapple coconut flavor. It is very yummy. There's yep. stuff like, like when I go to those places where there's a lot of samples, like certain companies, I'll take one, you know, their sample, I'll be like, that was tolerable, but then I'll go keep going over to Barleen's and taking their little packets. <laughs> and by the end of the day, I've had like 10 packages. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. I know it, it's hilarious, but they, their fish oil is that good where I'll, you'll keep it's walking good. over there and eating it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't ever, you know, fishy burp. It doesn't, re, you know, repeat on you like some other things can. And I think that's the that's the biggest complaint I get from the fish oils is the yes, fishy burp. Yes, it'll burp back. <laughs> Especially older people who already have like some belching heartburn problems, like every little thing repeats and you have to be very careful about what you give them. Mm -hmm. Like even garlic, like garlic can repeat. Like the one I'm taking the, probably the brand you're taking does not repeat on you. The the um, Cardio Gize from Young Living did not repeat on me. This Kyolic brand stuff does not repeat on me. And like my grandmother used to always buy garlic and she'd say, oh, it gives me heartburn. I can't stand it. And she'd come to my house and eat my garlic and then she'd be fine. So then she'd steal my garlic. And then I would go like months without taking garlic. I'm like, grandma took my garlic, but I'd let her because I'd always find the kinds that did not make her sad. You know, my grandfather used to he would just have whole garlic and, and swallow whole cloves. That's how he took garlic. I will <laughs> do that. If you pickle it, if you get like, I didn't start doing this till I went to Russia and they somehow pickle garlic really yeah. well. You cannot taste the garlic anymore. It just tastes like a little pickle. And so if I find pickled garlic, I can just eat the whole bottle, just pickled garlic. But otherwise I will not eat a garlic clove unless it's pickled. 
I guess yeah, I could pickle my own. Yeah, I'd rather take a capsule. Plus, I mean, one capsule is probably like taking several cloves. I'm gonna have to look that up. How many capsules <laughs> equal a clove? Because yeah. people, a lot of people say I eat so much garlic and they think they've, you know, eaten enough. And I'm like, let me quantify this. 